Okay, we are live. All right, um, before we get started tonight, and usually this night for 5.15, I um, have you all do it asynchronously online. I mean, that you just kind of you go to the website on your own time, not necessarily at 5.15 on Monday, and you uh, go through the material and complete the work that needs to be done. Kind of felt like um, there's uh, some need to touch base um, face to, well, in this environment, in Google Hangouts, to kind of talk about uh, the expectations, what we're looking at as far as next week is concerned, um, where some of you are in the in the process of getting some of these things done, and um, just kind of taking a look at what this blog site, which ultimately is your um, your signature project for EDUC 515, should be looking like at when it's all said and done. Um, as far as turning everything in is concerned, um, and having and having everything completed. Um, I don't need to have my grades in until a week after class ends. So if if our last class is next Monday, I don't have to have my grades in until the following Monday. So just looking at a calendar here real quick. Next Monday is the 31st. Then I don't have to have grades in until April 7th. So I'm... I'm not going to lose my mind if, you know, you need some extra time and you're working on it and getting it in, you know, Saturday, April 5th, Sunday, April 6th. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't you know, use that as a, as a crutch to wait until the last minute, but, you know, I know we all have busy lives. We just had a discussion about that before uh, we started. So, you know, I just wanted to alleviate any stress in that, in that area that, you know, at 11.59 p.m. on March 31st, the um, the guillotine doesn't come crashing down to chop off any uh, any academic heads. So um, I want what my preference is, you know, your best work and that you learn, and not so much that you know it's in by this by this minute and second. Got it. Okay. Good. So yep. um, as far as your blog site is concerned. Um, this is a, a mock-up of the 515 blog site, and at this point in the game, and and you know, and actually, this this is what it's this is actually what it should look like um, when you turn it in to task stream. And we'll go over the. I, if you've already taken courses, you've already acquainted with task stream. Um, you're not going to have a problem getting it in there. We'll go over actually putting it. Um, Upload it, put it, well, you don't even upload this because it's a website. Um, is submitting it to Task Stream next week. It's pretty, pretty easy process. Um, if you do not have, and do any of you not have a Task Stream account? Nope. So silence means everybody. Do, I should ask the other question. Does everybody have a Task Stream account? Yes. 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 Okay. Awesome. Yes. So you know, you you should be you know pretty familiar with um, submitting. To task stream, but again, we'll we'll go over very quickly next week, um, submitting this for for EDUC five five one five. The cool thing is, is that if you submit it, you still have you know, if you decide you need to make changes to it after you submit it, that's fine because you're submitting. You're basically going to be submitting a URL. You're going to be submitting you know a, a web a web address, and any changes you make to your site. You know, if any, anyone that goes to your web address from Task Stream are going to see whatever changes you make. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So what you should have um, when it's all said and done is on the front page of your blog site, you should have six um, blog entries. They don't necessarily need to be numbered. I mean, if you were looking at at anybody's blog, they wouldn't necessarily have you know, blog entry number six, blog entry number five. I put those on there just to uh, designate what they were. Um, so you should have six of those. Uh, number six, the most recent one, dealing with the uh, Infinite Thinking Machine, the Edu Podcast a blog. Um, blog entry number five on new technology, 
Number four, an iPad app review. Number three, on flipping class. Number two, on uh, personal learning networks. And number one, on changing education paradigms. So you should have six blog entries on your front page. should then have an About My Class page that has uh, your Prezi, your About My Class Prezi embedded in it. You should then have your Faith Integration Project, which has uh, your Faith Integration Project embedded in it. Um, the 20% project, like I told you from the get-go, you guys were kind of the guinea pigs for this 20% project. Um, it felt to me as we move, as we've been moving through it, like it kind of got sidelined, both for me and I think that it was kind of an extraneous uh, project for you as well. Um, I probably won't be moving forward with it unless I have personally a more a more struck. I mean, it's tough because it's supposed to be something that is um, student driven and not teacher driven and kind of without a whole lot of teacher structure put around it. But um, it's kind of was kind of a challenge. Um, I think in a class like this, especially with some of you taking other classes as well and being really busy with that, and you know your classrooms or your or your your work, and so um, for me it didn't feel really organic to the class. Um, so what I would what I would say at this point is if you have one or two posts to your 20% project blog, that's fine. I'm not looking for any kind of a um, you know a wrap up to it, any kind of a, a presentation built around it. Um, just kind of leave it as is. I still want it on there, just so that I, you know, so just so that you know, it can it can kind of document the experience. But um, beyond that, it, it can just kind of lay as it is. Uh, then you'll have a screencast page, and I'll, these are just I just put pages in here. I didn't really put anything on them. Uh, and then at the end of at the the last few pages you'll have you'll have your um, iOS app presentation. There, where you presented uh, you built a presentation around two different. IOS apps, one for productivity and one for creativity. You'll have a podcast page, which um, is uh, the project that uh, was to be done uh, this past week. Uh, tonight's project is an infographic project. Um, it, we'll, we'll talk about that tonight. And then your final page will be your case study. Okay, so again, I'll, I'll post this um, screencast at the bottom of the, uh, the week eight page. When, it, when we're all finished, and uh, you can go back to review exactly what the pages are that you need to have on your uh, blog site for it to be complete. Okay, any, any questions about any of that material and, and you know, how it sits on the page and, and um, any, uh, any kind of last minute, oops, I didn't know we had to do this or anything to that? Degree? No. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. No, I'm right. good. I think it's pretty straightforward. I think I think for, for me the the biggest thing is making sure I have okay, what's what's a blog and what's its own web page all all kind of lined up. But I think you explained that. So. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, the main thing that the 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 kind of main thrust of of the site is is your blog. And so that's why we have it heading the page. So you know, if you were to click up here on the top of the title of the site, it would go right to this page. This is your front page, is your blog page. and then everything else is kind of a um, kind of serves as a portfolio of everything that you've completed over the course of the nine weeks that that we've been together. Okay, cool. Hey, any other questions? I think it's good. All right, cool. So uh, we are in week eight. This is really the last, um, the last night of any new material. Um, everything next week will be um, basically uh, troubleshooting. If uh, you know, kind of showing off a little bit, looking at you know different different um, elements of what you what you've completed in your sites. Um, you know, looking at any issues that any of you might be having with any elements of your projects, um, your case studies, um, and uh, you know we've got what else? Task stream, and we've got um, evaluation, and that's about it. So this is the last last night of any uh, of any new content, <coughs> and it's all centered in one area on infographics. It's kind of a, a, a narrow range we're hitting here, so 
Um, you know, it's, we're, we're, it's not going to take us very long to go through this. Um, just to kind of grasp and get, grasp and get an understanding of what infographics are, and uh, then uh, looking at some different tools that you can use to create your own, which which um, is going to be your project for the week, and is going to tie into and connect to your case study. Okay, so um, at the top of the page here, we have a um, just a, a an image here of a lot of different types of infographics. Infographics are pretty are pretty popular on the web um, when uh, we, when I gave you the um, the elements, the chart there for uh, week six, uh, when you had to look at new technologies, I, I included an infographic with each of the um, with each of the new technologies that I presented to you. Um, and so on the week eight page here, there's a very simple infographic on infographics. And so uh, this, this kind of simplistic explanation, an infographic is data, which is sorted, then arranged, and then presented visually. And that's, I mean, that's it at its, at its essence. It's data or, inf or information, which is sorted, arranged, and presented visually. Okay? And I'm not going to ask you to you know, dive into deep numbers and to you know, uh, really invest yourselves in creating... Uh, bar graphs or pie charts or anything like that to really start breaking down data. Um, you know, I'll, I'll show you a couple of different ways that uh, that you can use the infographic environment to present information about uh, your uh, your topic for your case study. Okay, so what an infographic really is: uh, graphical, uh, graphic visual representations of information, data, or knowledge. And kind of this is this is going to be our, our biggest focus here is the idea of information. Uh, you're more than welcome to create, you know, charts that depict uh, different bits of data. If you find that that's that's well with, you know, if, the, if that's something that you want to focus on, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, using, uh, I think, the easiest way to create and to develop one of these uh, infographics at the level that we're going to be doing it is to um, make a visual representation of information. Okay. okay, and I'll show you how, I'll show you some ways in which we do that. Uh, it's a, it can also be termed as an umbrella term for illustrations and charts that instruct people which otherwise would be difficult or impossible with only text. And then we have a comprehensive list from uh, a couple of guys from a, a blog called Communication Nation. It's a visual explanation that helps you more easily understand, find, or do something. It's visual and, when necessary, integrates words and pictures in a fluid, dynamic way. It stands alone and is completely self-explanatory. It reveals information that was formerly hidden or submerged. It makes possible faster, more consistent understanding, and it's universally understandable. And so, you know, um, you know, being the the kind of uh, nerd that I am, I collect infographics on a on a Pinterest board. Um, some people collect recipes and fashion and sunglasses and different types of uh, Converse, um, uh, Chuck Taylor All-Stars and all kinds of things. Um, yeah, I, I collect infographics in Pinterest. And so by clicking, no, not you. Uh, by clicking here, it'll open up my infographic board. And just, just to start getting an understanding of the different ways that infographics can can present information. The majority of the infographics that I um, that I pin are ones that have to do with education in some way, shape, or form. So, can I ask a question about your Pinterest here? Sure. Um, so, is this something that everybody can see? I've never used Pinterest before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a public board. Basically, yeah, Pinterest. Same here. I need I need an explanation on it too. Okay, cool. So so Pinterest is a is it's a virtual pin board. Okay, the idea that um, let's let me uh, show you an example real quick. Let's look for education infographic. No, nope, not one on not one on Pinterest. I want one that's not on Pinterest. Uh, good. Newton's a good a good source for 
education infographics. Okay, I don't have time to do that right now. So let's say I've got here, I see here there's a, a breaking the prison cycle through education. It's an infographic. So I'm going to click on this. And this is one that I don't have yet, so I'm going to, this is kind of a, a real deal for me. It's one that I can collect here. Okay, Newton's really cool in that, you know, it allows you to share uh, to some, some different, um, some of your different uh, social networking sites, like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, uh, LinkedIn. And it also gives you a uh, HTML code here if you wanted to embed this infographic on your website. So it's kind of free to use, right? But this, this uh, whole big guy here is an infographic. So basically, um, what, if we go back and look here real quick at, and, and I'll get back to Pinterest. So I'm not leaving Pinterest yet. I'm just using this as a, as a, as a chance to look at infographics. Um, a visual explanation that helps you more easily understand, find, or do something. And so this is one about understanding, right, how education can break the prison cycle, right? It, um, Prison population, we have uh, in America almost a, a quarter of the world's incarcerated population is in uh, the U.S. And so it goes into how much prisons cost us, uh, both in financially and in, uh, and in human costs. And then it goes into youth in prison, uh, barriers to school and community reentry after prison. And this is kind of personally right up my alley. Uh, right now, over half of my kids uh, have, of my, pers of my students right now, have uh, been in prison or are on probation. So, you know, I've got a lot of investment in something like this, so this is very interesting to me. But, you know, it, it basically now is breaking down different elements of, of information in different ways. And if you look, it, it kind of moves from subject to subject, almost as if an essay, uh, almost in the same way an essay does. Okay, this paragraph is how much prisons cost us. Uh, this paragraph is on youth in prison. This paragraph is in barriers to school and community reentry, uh, investment in prison education, uh, cheaper to educate than incarcerate. Technology can accelerate the solution. So we've got a we've got some, uh, we've a few different elements hand in hand, working hand in hand throughout this um, infographic to make kind of a, a real kind of cohesive um, argument, or or in this case, just uh, just. It, it's, it's just informative, right? We're just looking. We're, we're just looking at some certain pieces of information, okay? And so this is this is a, a really great example of an infographic. But now this is something that I want to collect, and I want to stick it on my virtual pin board. There's a few different ways I can do that. Uh, the first way would be here's my here's my pin board itself, and I can click on here and add a pin, okay? And so in this case, um, it's, this is on a web page, and here's the address of the web page. I'm going to copy that. And this is, this is probably the most labor-intensive way to do it. It's really not all that labor-intensive. Okay, I want to add a pin from the web. I want to add a pin from this site. And this is the only graphic on, this, on the page. It only collects things that are images or, or embedded videos. So in this case, this infographic is exactly what I want to pin. So I'll click the pin it button. I'll pick the board I want to put it to, which in this case is my infographic page. Um, in this case, what it's all about, sometimes that'll autofill. It didn't this time, so, um, so I'll just title it. How can education break the prison cycle? And then I'll pin it. And although you notice there was also a, a little checkbox there uh, that allows me to post it to Twitter if I want to. But um, now I can take a look at my infographics page again. And where are you? Should be on here. Okay, and so there's there's my my new infographic there. Okay, so, uh, you know, just that's how I use this board. Um, like I said, there are a lot of other ways that people use uh, boards. Um, this one is on a bathroom remodel, so 
you know, can if there's... See, sorry. Go ahead. Can we see Pinterest if we don't have a Pinterest account? Sure. You could go, if, if you're on the web, if you're on this web page here, uh, on my, on my web page, and you go down to the bottom of this, this uh, Pinterest widget and click see on Pinterest, you can, you can look at it, yeah. I mean, and you can just go to Pinterest.com and look at, you know, a variety of things. But in this case, you know, I put, I put up Wang's coding in my bathroom, so here's, um, I, I click on the Pinterest here, and it's a YouTube video, in this informal and it plays right in Pinterest. You know, so when, as, I'm, as I'm looking on the Internet for different things, right, so one of the things I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be putting up in my hallway a board and batting, which is a little different than board and batting here. So um, let's say that I find uh, something that... Let me spell it right first. Okay, so I find here a blog on a couple who who did it uh, uh, for fifty-seven bucks in their house, and so uh, this is a page that maybe I want to save. And so you know, I showed you different ways that you can bookmark things, and they also have a video here. They kind of they 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 let them video a. Uh, uh, video the the process and so I could go back to Pinterest and do that but there's a, a couple of different ways that I can do it I, in this case I have a Pinterest extension um, in my uh, on my Chrome browser so in tools under extensions Oh, actually, it's a part. It's a part of my Shareaholic. Okay, so I have I have one called Shareaholic for Pinterest. It's and so um, basically what what I can do now is I can click this button up here on my browser, and it will then again look for all the different images. It'll pull up all of the different images that are on this blog page, and it should have their videos on here too, but I don't see them. which is fine. And so if I decide I just want to pin one of their pictures, let's say I want to pin that picture, and I want to put it in my bathroom remodel board, okay, and like I said, sometimes it's still autofill, so breaking down our $57 board and batten from Young House Loves, uh, the, uh, their, their blog site, and I pin it, okay, now I've just pinned that to my bathroom remodel page. So there it is there, and so now I've got you know I've got a whole page of of things that I've pinned to this basically virtual pin board or virtual cork board. And in this case, if now now that I have them all in the same place, let's say I click on this uh, image here from from what I just looked at, or let's say I just here's here's another site that I found board and batten on. So I click on that, it brings up the picture, and then when I click on the picture it'll open up the page that I, I pinned it from. So all of the instructional part of, you know, what these people went through to put up their board and batten, right, it takes me right to the page that they created that I originally found it on. Okay. Um, so I like you said, it, it's just another way of bookmarking things where, like, Feedly does blogs and all of these different resources are or bookmark different types of um, inform information sure it's 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 you're basically curating information yeah you know what I mean and in this case this is this is a, a very um, a graphical one you know what I mean so it's it's you seeing stuff right so right. if I just went to, if I just went to Pinterest like anything else you follow people right so I've got a list of people that I follow, okay, and I you can not only just follow people, but you can follow, you don't have to necessarily follow everything that a person sees, you can just follow their boards, like a specific board. Huh. So I could look here at this guy, Kevin Honeycutt, who's a teacher, and I can see that he has here 
a few different boards, but some of them, like Kevin's favorite stuff, is not an educational one. It's just one that he uses, right? But here's one on project-based learning. And if I can go to that and say, I'm interested in project-based learning, and I'll look through here and I'll see, yeah, he's got some pretty cool stuff here that, that I that I can that, that I'd like to see in my in my feed, then I can go right here and I can follow his board. Okay, and then when I just go to Pinterest.com, right now his the stuff that he's put on there is in my feed. So these are all people's boards that I follow. So Connie Wise, her tech tips and tools. Um, Edutopia, their English language arts board, um, Discovery Education, I follow, Larry Furlazo, I follow, and so, you know, this woman here, Beth Still, she's an educator, but I get a lot of her breakfast ones, and her. And then she's got her pork board. I think I probably follow, just followed her, period, and not followed specifically one of her boards, right? So I get, I get some of her recipe stuff. Um, and so, in this way now, I'm, I've, I've got my PLN, you know, I've got a bit of my PLN invested in Pinterest, so that, you know, here's Cindy Murphy, Infographics for Education, and here's an infographic that she posted on the number two pencil from New York Times. So, you know, that might be something now that I'm thinking, okay, that looks cool, I want to pin it. And so I pin it. I put it on my infographics page, and boom, there we go. I've just put it on my infographic page. So I've used my PLN in Pinterest to find an infographic to put on my own board uh, for my own consumption. You know, so now when I go to, sorry, when I go to my own personal website, and one of the things that I just like to do, maybe to, just to humor myself, because I don't know how many people are looking at my website, is I put up an, a different infographic every week on the front page of my website. So um, now that, and that's the main reason that I, you know, one of the reasons that I collect them on Pinterest. I know that when, you know, when I'm going to uh, put a new infographic up, I just go to my Pinterest board. In this case, my. Info, in my infographics board, and I choose, I grab one of these infographics that I found somewhere, and I put it on my, the front page of my website. So, you know, it's just a way of collecting different things. And so, you know, I know people that have Pinterest boards full of, you know, educational videos or, you know, of, of different kinds of resources. And so there's just, you know, a lot of different ways to use it. I decided early on that I kind of wanted to use Pinterest solely as as in is an education as an education site for me. You know, but my wife, you know, whenever whenever she's like, you know what, there's this really cool recipe that I found. Um, can you make it for dinner tonight? And I'm like, where is it? She goes, just look on my on my Pinterest uh, you know, dinner board and it's you know it'll be on there. So, you know, just a, a you know kind of a different way to to house information. And you know they, it has an app on on uh, for iPhone for Android and I mean that's basically where where my wife uses it all the time on her phone not really on the on her computer. All right. Yep. Everybody still there? Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah, so there's our little bird walk on, on, uh, on Pinterest, everything you didn't wanted to know and maybe a couple things you didn't. But, yeah, and then you can make cool little uh, um, embeddable uh, Pinterest boards that people can use to, uh, that you can use to show off uh, some of your boards. Okay, so um, what I'm going to ask you to do, and that turned out looking funny. I'll have to fix that is uh, you're going to be creating an infographic of your own. Um, kind of break down how to do that momentarily. It's, it's, not, super, it's, it's not something that, that has to be really hard. So this is, I, I like giving this, this project last because um, it, it doesn't have to be you know, super complex. It's not like you have to go in and learn you know, a complicated uh, 
image uh, creation and manipulation tool. So you're going to create an infographic highlighting some aspect of the technology you're researching for your case study. This may include, and I know most people tend to go in this direction, a timeline of its history, because that's part of, part of what you're being asked to do is look at the evolution of a technology. So it can be a timeline of the history, um, and some sort of analysis of data regarding its use, how it's currently being used. Um, so there's some different there's some different options there. Um, the look and feel of it, you know, you want to you you want to uh, use different colors, but make those colors consistent with one another, meaning they kind of match using a little of uh, uh, little aesthetics. Um, appropriate font size and style, uh, titles and subtitles, bright visual colors, uh, different background colors, text information, visually appealing using graphics. Uh, charts, graphs, and tables if they're appropriate, uh, arrows, lines, text boxes. And then uh, the main thing is at the bottom of your um, infographic is always to cite your sources. So whatever source you use, um, whatever websites you use to, to get your information, make sure you cite them at the bottom of your, of your infographic. Um, let's, uh... Okay, so what I have, and I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to sit here and, and take you through all of um, these different videos, but I've got a, a series of videos here that, that I want you to watch. Um, the first one is uh, by a school librarian, and it deals with infographics, and about half of it is tutorial on a couple of different tools, and about half of it is kind of breaking down infographics in education a little bit. Um, good video. Um, I watch at least the first half of it. Uh, then underneath that, under the infographic tutorial section, um, I've basically embedded tutorials of three different tools. The first one is called Easily. It's easel.ly. And that link doesn't work, so I'll have to fix that link. Okay, so there's Easily. The next one is called Infogram. Boy, none of these work. That's funny. Okay. And that's basically infogr.am, Infogram. Let's see if I'm three for three with bad links here. Nope, two for three. One, two for three bad. And one's called PictoChart. Okay, they're three different, okay, three different uh, tools, um, all pretty easy to use. Okay, um, this the PictoChart one that you're looking at here um, is the newest one. It's the one that I don't really ha I don't really have any um, experience using it, but it looks to be pretty much the same as the other two. It just might have a little more um, some some better graphics to it. Um, I know for sure PictoChart is a for pay tool, but they have a free version that just has fewer um, fewer graphics and elements to it. So basically, on on a, the, I'm gonna just kind of go through easily real quick, just to give you um, an idea of what we're looking at here. But all three of those tutorial videos, and basically, you know, you can just kind of look up a tutorial video on any one of them at any, you know, and and on um, YouTube. YouTube as well to kind of get a really good idea of how it's used. But basically, on um, on this is easily right. All these all of these have different themes. Okay, so there's you can always you know use a template. They've got these themes are like templates. So let's say you were going to be doing the history of something, right? This this um, theme or template basically is gives you the opportunity to create a historical snapshot of whatever it is you're looking at. And so I know it says 07, 08, 09, but once you, once you uh, decide you want to use this, this theme, drag it down into your, into, onto your workspace, and then basically it all becomes a matter of just changing um, numbers in time. So let's say you know 1958 was the first time something you know somebody used something you know cameras in the classroom. 
Okay, so you can make all these changes. Um, you can upload images. So let's say you find images on the internet that you want to use. You can always upload images to bring them in. So let's say, you know, I found something. Okay, so you can bring in your own images. Okay, uh, you can, you know, play with the text, you know, make the text whatever you want. Uh, if you click on something and hit the delete button, you can delete stuff. Okay, so just to give you a kind of a snapshot of, you know, a couple of different ideas and things that people have created. Um, here's a, uh, someone did learning management systems in one of my classes, so you'll see they did a history of learning management systems from that all the way up to, you know, Edmodo and Haiku and Sakai and Moodle and all that. Okay, so that's kind of a history of or evolution of a tool example of an infographic and then the other one I have embedded down here is um, how it's being used so someone did Apple TV and so this infographic is is basically laying out how Apple TV is used what it is what its features are you know kinda how you can utilize it around the classroom and then you, uh, and in info in this infogram one I'm not sure if in easily you can yeah, I don't think you can. Infogram, if you ever wanted to put, if you wanted to put in a, a video, it, it accepts that. Um, easily doesn't. Easily is just image. Okay, and so, I mean, and this is all something that, that you'll see in the tutorial video, but if I wanted to put in any kinds of shapes, you know, if I wanted to put in arrows, you know, I can put in arrows, I can move it around, I can spin it, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. If I want to put in text, I have title, header, and body, right? We know that, you, you know, the title text is going to be bigger, the header body is going to be a little smaller than the title, and the body is going to be smaller than the header. And so if I wanted to put in body text somewhere, I can drag it in, double-click, change my text, I can scale it up or down, I can drag it around, okay, using the, the tools up here, I can change the font. I, I noticed can, that some of those um, were longer and some of them were shorter. Does this have the ability to make it longer so you can put more? Um, in, I, like, literally length? Let me... Yeah, I think, let me, hold on. Okay, so that one's been saved. This one easily, I'm not. I'm not sure that it does. I think that you're kind of, you're kind of built into. Yeah, I think I think that you might be married to the size that they give you. But I could be wrong. I'm that's something that I would have to look up. I've only as a personally using it myself, um, I know that Infogram does. So Infogram's a little different tool. 
and you can the more elements that you add to it, then um, you know if I if I wanted to add a map to it, it would it every time I every time you interject a new element into it, it shrinks or lengthens it. So if I wanted to add a text field, I would want to add a headline, right? And then you can you can you can move them around. But every time you add something new, it lengthens the the infographic. But easily, I think you're you're married to the the creative workspace that you have there. So on an infographic, is it um, free also? Yeah. Yeah, these are all free, and you can you know you can when you first sign up for them, connect them with your with your uh, Google account, and it'll sign you right in. Um, and they all offer the ability to embed. So once you're once you're completed with it, you can click the share button, and you can grab that code and drop it right into your page. Okay, so I mean this this uh, the infogram one is a little more um, is a little more kind of uh, uniform. I think it's a little easier to work with. Easily is a little more of a canvas that you can you can move around on and have a little more freedom. And then again, PictoChart I think is a lot more like easily. I think it has I think it um it has like a canvas and all that. So Actually, it looks like it's a little kind of a kind of a um, a mixture of the two. Looks like you can add blocks to it. So, um, again, this is a, this one. This one tool is one that I haven't really played with too much. Okay, so you're just going to basically, you know, choose. One of the three, again, if you're looking at it, kind of the ease of use, I think it goes infogram first, then easily, and then pick up charts, kind of the unknown quantity. Okay, just to look at a couple more um, examples of Okay, uh, development of the camera over time. There's, there's one uh, again. You know, pretty simplistic, but gets the job done. Okay. Okay. This this one is on applications to help you shoot, process, and edit video. Oh, here's one that is a takeoff on the one we saw there in Easily, the history of audio reproduction. Okay, so from 1877 with Thomas Edison all the way up to, you know, MP3 players. Okay, so just to give you some, just to give you um, an opportunity to uh, jump into the world of infographics, get an idea of what they are, and then build your own that applies to um, what your what your um, what your project is? You know that's that's the the goal of the week here. Okay. Any any questions on infographics on what the expectations are as far as your involvement in creating one? No, no, no questions. Okay. Um, any questions for the for the for the good of the cause uh, on anything else? I have a quick question. Yes. What week was it that you gave a um, in-depth explanation of the case study? It Do you remember? Was, yeah. It it was actually week six. It was the week that we didn't meet. Okay, that's right. That's right. Thank and, you. That's what I need so to know. It's, yeah, and it and so it's that explanation. Actually, it's not on this page. It's on. <laughs> Uh, has kind of your rubric, so to speak. Right. So if you go to if you go to on on a 
on the hierarchy here to week six. Yes. A description of it here in the video that I created, and then also scrolling down, uh, there's a breakdown of it and then a rubric. Right. Perfect. I'd forgotten and, which week that was. Yeah, and then a couple of examples. So, yeah, week six. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? On the um, form we had to create in Google, yes, um, I embedded that into my Prezi. Was that fine? Embedded it into the Prezi or embed embedded it into the into the web page? Well, I did a faith integration right. Prezi, and I I embedded it into the Prezi as part of it. The Prezi itself does yes. it? Is it? I've never seen that before. Is it? A, can can people answer it? Answer the the, the elements in the form when it's in the Prezi? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> I, I, I believe so, yes. Yeah, if they can, fine. If not, you can leave it in the Prezi, but also put it, embed it into the the um, Weebly page underneath the Prezi. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll double check that. Thank you. Okay, and I'll look at it too. And I know, Mark, regarding those forms, I know we were supposed to go back and, like, answer, like, uh, respond to other people's forms, uh -huh. but I I looked through there and could not find anyone else's forms. So let's take a look. And I haven't looked maybe, since you did the blog roll. Maybe you could go to mine and see if you can type on it. It's in the bottom circle down there. Oh, so you got the link there. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that, that link is fine. You can leave that in there like that. But are you able to type into it and answer it there? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. What, not in there, but I can. Actually, what what? You know what? Do this. Um, when you somehow I was able to open it in mine. Go to uh, on. So we're looking right now at the actual file, Tarina. Just go to fit to when you go there. Go to file. Right. And then to embed and grab that code and then just just drop it into your Weebly page. Yeah, no problem. Underneath. Just drop drop put it put in a new um just drop in an embed uh square in here and then paste that code into it. Okay. Because for some reason that link takes me to a copy of the actual file itself. So Christine, I'm going to use yours if you don't mind. No. No, don't, or no, you don't mind? I don't mind. Okay, cool. Yeah, so your Google form, you, you know, your faith integration project should be up on top, and then the form should be underneath. Okay, so I think that just was something that wasn't super clear. I'm going to go back and just double check mine. Um, yeah. to, I know I did the form and I, you know, had it all done. Right. But I just don't know if it was in that format. Okay, cool. So yeah, when you, when you, when you, you know, in, again to to embed that form, you know, you just go to your in, in your Google Drive, you'll go to File, and to embed, and it'll give you that code that you can use to embed it if if it's not there already. Okay. Okay. So um, again, uh, use this week to you know do a little work on the in, to, to do the work on the infographics, and to keep plotting forward on that case study. And um, and when we meet next week, again, it'll be a work session. So for those of you in San Diego who are going to want and need a little bit of face-to-face -face time, 
would it help to to meet face to face? Not necessarily. Um, I'm just like I said, just trying to power through the assignments that I have because I'm I've got three classes, so right. I think I'm good. Okay. Um, what I what I can do is again, I mean, if you're if you're bumping your head on something, you know, one of the one of the things, like I said, I went to the Q conference this past uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Q is a computer using educators. It's a California um, ed tech society, basically, and so it's all you know, teachers and ed tech coordinators, and you know, people that are that are heavily invested in the uh, in in the ed tech community in in California. And one of the one of the things I heard more than once is this idea of, of failing, you know, and and you know the idea that all failing is 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 a success that hasn't happened yet. That kind of idea, you know, I call failure my first try, my second try, my third try. Um, you know, I want you to, I, I, you know, I want you to kind of bump your head against something, but not to the point where you're going to start smashing into a wall. So if you find yourself at that point, you know, let me, let me know, send me a text or. Um, or email me and, and you know we'll we'll see if we can't uh, work work through it together. Okay. That's fair. All right. I like to be fair. <laughs>